Welcome everyone. Just remember before we get started, if you want to download the project links, it will be down below in the description. Just all you got to do is enter your email and it's completely free. Welcome back everyone. In this video, we'll be getting started with our GUI. So uh, the first thing we want to do is actually take our game over uh, overlay here and we're going to save this branch as its own scene. So let's create it in our scenes folder. We'll save it and let's hide it because we don't really need it all the time. So, okay. Now we can probably assume that we're going to need a canvas layer for our uh, scene or our node for our GUI. So let's uh, save this or rename it to GUI. And we're going to want a few things. And one of the main things that we're going to use is a progress bar. Now, if you remember, we are going to use a progress bar for our HP. Now, again, if you remember, we had an issue with the texture of it, right? Now we're going to edit this a little bit. So try to keep up. What we're going to do is we're going to turn off the show percentage. We're going to fill the value to 100 so I can see where the HP itself is. I'm going to extend it, well, as much as I want it to be. So uh, maybe that's good, the length. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a sprite 2D. Now I'm going to drag my UI into my texture. I'm going to go to region, enabled, and then edit region. Zoom out. And now I can select uh, this guy without the dotted line because now it's just going to take this uh, region and use that. And there we now we have this little guy. So let's put this as uh, not a child, but in front of the, uh, the sprite. And now we can adjust it to be the same length or let's say that big, a little smaller. And we can take our progress bar and make it fit to that uh, bar itself. So now we can just adjust it like so on both ends. And now we have a progress bar. So it looks pretty decent. Now what we need to do is we'll make it work. So let's rename this to HP bar. And in our GUI, let's add a script. We'll save this in our scripts folder. We'll save it in our player because this does have to do with the player. We'll create. And now we'll, we'll, we'll won't delete all of this because what we actually want to do is uh, get our access to the HP first. So in our player, if you remember, we have the uh, player right here. So we can just take it like this, get node. And uh, now we can get the health. But this is access to the health, but what do we want to do with it? Well, we want to get our HP bar and set the value equal to the health, like so. Now what we can do is update this at all times. Now here, we actually want to use the max value at the ready. So on the ready, we're going to set our max value equal to the health. And then on the process, we're just going to constantly be updating it. Now, Realistically, we don't actually want to do this. I, I kind of want to give a performance tip. Uh, I have some videos on, on performance, but generally speaking, we don't want to just shove anything into our, our process functions because this slows our game down. So ideally, what you would do is update the health bar anytime you get hit. So realistically, you would put it here. Now, that's something I'm going to leave you up to do. I want you to try to do it yourself and see if you can update the HP bar from the player. Okay. So I'll leave that up to you. But that is a suggestion that I would encourage you to look into. OK, now let's see if this actually works, though. So let's hit play. And let's go to our monster here. And we can see when I get hit, my HP goes down, and I died. And I can retry, et cetera. Now, what if I want to hide my GUI, though? Because that kind of might make more sense. So in our game over, we can take our GUI and hide it, because it looks a little nicer like this. So we'll say uh, get node, and we will hide the GUI. So that way I can hide the uh, GUI when I die, and we don't have to worry about showing it because it should reset uh, on the retry. So you can now see it right there. Okay, now we're gonna we're not gonna do any logic just yet, but we're gonna set up the container uh, and stuff for our actual uh, well, menu. So our inventory, our quest uh, overlay, stuff like that. So let's create a node, uh, a control node. And this will be our container 
for our well general GUI. So you'll kind of see what I mean in just a minute as I add more things. So the first thing we want to add is a panel. This will be our well, interface essentially for our uh, inventory and stuff, right? So in here, we'll add a VBox container. And this will contain three buttons. So let's add some buttons. Now in here, uh, I want to take the buttons. Oops, and if I duplicate them, you'll see that there's a little bit of space between them. But if I want more or less, I can go to my VBox container, theme override, constants, and just increase or decrease the separation. So I'll increase it just a little bit, maybe to 15. So now we have a decent, uh, you know, uh, separation. <laughs> and now I'm going to align this in the center. And then I'm just going to drag it like this so that we have it perfectly centered in the middle. And every time I add a new button or anytime you add a new button, uh, it would be centered properly. Okay, so the first one, we're going to have it be the profile. This is going to be the uh, inventory. And this is going to be the uh, quest system, so or the quest tab. So in each of these, we'll fill in the words for it. So quest, inventory, and profile. And there we go. There's our uh, button system, essentially. And if you don't like it, we can always just move it over a little bit. And there we go. Now we want to actually fill in some things for each of these. Uh, but we're not going to do that just yet. But what we're going to do is we're going to first take this out here and then add in three new control tabs. We're going to just do that and duplicate them. This will be the quests. This will be the inventory. And this will be the profile. Uh, and maybe we can just rearrange them so they're the same uh, order as the buttons. OK, now what we'll do is we'll save uh, this branch as a scene. We'll save it into our player scene, save it. And now we have our GUI as a separate scene. Now we'll do the same thing. We haven't added anything yet, but we'll do the same thing for the profile, the inventory, and the quests. So in fact, at this point, I might as well just make a GUI folder in here. Now let's exit here. Pop, uh, I can't pop it in there. So oops, let me rename this properly, profile. And let's go back to our scenes folders. Put player, and I'm going to move our GUI scene into that GUI folder so I have things more organized. All right, let's do the same thing for inventory. Just save this, pop it in here, and quests. Save it in here, and that is it. All right, that is it for this video because now it, we're in the next three videos. We're going to do each one of these uh, in a separate video, so that way we can do one at a time. We don't overcomplicate things too much. Okay, but this is a pretty good start. Um, so what we can do to just finish off is do some of the logic to make this uh, show and not show. So okay, in our process function, we're going to have an input is action pressed. And we're going to check for pause, because if you recall, we added that in uh, from a while ago. And now what we can do is we can say get tree dot paused is equal to not get tree paused. And this will just change it to whatever it isn't. And the reason we do this is because now I don't need a separate uh, check to see if it's paused or not, or if it is paused to unpause it, etc. It just takes it to whatever it is and not and take it to the opposite, right? And now what I can do is I can take this container and I can take its visibility, say visible, is equal to the get tree dot paused because get tree dot paused is actually a boolean, and so I can say if the tree is paused, meaning it's true, then I want this to be visible. Okay, so let's uh, say get node here, so I can keep things consistent. And we'll do the same thing for the HP bar, so get node. And I'm just going to copy this into this guy here. All right, let's test this. Um, the one thing we actually want to do here is say get node dot, uh, let's do this, make sure we have that properly. We want to say dot hide. We're going to take our container and hide it uh, when we start the game. So that way, it's not automatically showing. All right, now if I hit Escape, we can see that it pops up. If 
But you can see that if I hit escape again, it does not work. Now you might be already knowing why, and that is because in our GUI, we need to change the process to always. Now, this is something you might have learned now, is that even if there's code in here that's checking for input, if the game is paused, it won't check for input if that node or that script inside of the node does not have the always uh, process on. Okay, so now if I play again, I can pause and unpause using escape, which is very cool. And if I try moving around, it won't work. And of course we have these buttons, but they don't do anything just yet. Uh, so we'll do that uh, soon. All right, I will see you all in the next video where we'll get started with most likely our profile uh, and then inventory right after. So I'll see you all there.